Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax. And while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Well, now my pipe is lit, the evening paper is put away, and dinner isn't ready, so, uh, so come over here, darling. To think that I, your only wife, comes after your pipe and after your evening paper. Ah, but before dinner. Well, thanks. Mm-hmm. And you're lucky you're asked to come at all. You know that, don't nice you? Nice talk. Come on, make a laugh. All right, sit down easily now, not all at once. There. Ooh. How's that? You're a lot more woman than when I married you. You know that, don't you? Is that good? Mm, not bad. Oh, home is much nicer when you're home, David. I should hope so. You know, winter days are supposed to be short. They certainly seem endless to me. All right, tell me. Now, what kind of a day did you have? Mm, usual kind of day. Did you talk to Mama? Well, I called. No answer. No? I guess she must have been out. So. Well, how's the baby? Same big nuisance. But I like him. Cow is fine. Everybody's fine. Mm. Doesn't sound as if very much happened. Well, I'm not surprised nothing happened at all. Nothing? Nothing, 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 nothing happened at all. It, uh, it didn't even rain? Nope. Couldn't work up the energy. <laughs> it was dampish and cold, so I didn't even go out. Well, you're getting a taste of winter on the farm. Yeah, so I am. <laughs> and you don't like it very much, hmm? I oh, wouldn't put it that strongly, but summer's nicer. Sunshine, birds, flowers. Be able to go out and see things grow. I don't know. Somehow a farm is built more for summer. But I suppose since there has to be winter, there has to be winter. And the best thing to do is just... Well, what do you think's the best thing to do? Claudia, maybe we ought to close up the house and you come back into town for a few weeks. Or a couple of months, even. We well, stay at Mama's. Do you like that? David, I don't like being a quitter. Now, who said you'd be a quitter? Well, I might be. Nobody's going to call you a quitter. Well, it's already towards the end of January. We only have February and March to struggle through. I'll manage, David. Would you be surprised, Mrs. Norton, if I told you that I was uh, thinking about a trip today? David. You know, we're psychic. Frank? I was thinking trips today, too. Really? You and I, far away. As a matter of fact, I was I was so thinking about a trip today that I stopped into a travel bureau. You did? Mm -hmm. There I was, walking down the street, thinking of you. Oh, that was sweet. Thinking of you up here in the country, kind of lonesome up here in the country. Oh, well, baby keeps me busy. The weather getting darker and darker, so I stepped into a travel bureau. Go on, go on. And I walked up to the little man behind the counter, mm -hmm. and I said to him, my wife and I are considering taking a trip. We are. Mm -hmm. And I said, would you tell me the various places that my wife and I could travel to? Oh, David, you are wonderful. And he asked how long would we be gone and if I had any specific ideas to where we'd go. He said no. No, oh, I said no. Exactly. Mm. So he took out a whole sheaf of travel folders. Oh, I love reading travel folders. And go I, on, go on. I brought them home to you. Oh, David, quick, let me see them. Why did you say so instead of beating around the bush like well, this? I've only been home about ten minutes. Well, it's ten minutes of beating too long. Where are they? Right, right here in my pocket. Now, just give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, come on. Hurry up. You are a greedy little girl. Now, here. Now, here's the first. The Highlands of Scotland. <gasps> what a beautiful picture of a river between hills. Mm, that's the Highlands of Scotland. Read me something from the folder. Go on, hurry up. Oh, uh, another unforgettable tour to be made from Stirling. Sterling Silver? No, Sterling Scotland. Oh, see. It's by the road that runs westward to Loch Lomond. Loch Lomond. Loch Lomond. Where have I heard that before? Mm, on yon of bunny banks and on yon of bunny prey. <laughs> oh, David, that was beautiful. That was a bagpipe. If you can sing like that in Scottish, we ought to go to Scotland. Then again, if I can't sing like that in Scottish, we, we, we really don't have to go to Scotland at all. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Oh, but look at some of the names and the places. Aren't they lovely? Loch Fine and mm -hmm. Tarber, Argyle. I wonder, is that where Argyle socks come from? I wouldn't be surprised. You know, I started knitting you a pair about a year ago. I wonder what happened to them. It's funny. David, listen to this. 
Four miles offshore, towards the Firth of Lorn, lies the rugged Isle of Mull. Oh, Scotland. I had no idea Scotland was so romantic. Oh, well, so much for Scotland. I'll keep it in the back of my head. Where else are we going? Mm, now, let's see. Would you, uh, you like to go to Cuba? I'd love to go to Cuba. Tell me about Cuba. Cuba. The Havana moon on a warm island with you. Beaches, sunshine, nothing to do. No pops, no pans, no snow, no die-uppers even. David, let's go to Cuba. I'd love to go to Cuba with you. All right. We can fly there in just a few hours. Are you serious? Of course I'm serious. Aren't you? Well, I guess so. I, I hadn't really thought we could. Well, what's to stop us? We're not just dreaming, David. <laughs> I'm not. Are you? Latin women with dark eyes, dark hair, dark looks. There is no Latin in you. Mm, you're telling me I couldn't even pass it in school. Mm, you couldn't even pass it in Cuba. I always think of Latin women being so, well, you know. Mm -hmm, I know. Mm. Oh, and those castanet things and mm -hmm. lace, you know. Mm -hmm. I think every woman should have a little Latin in her. David, do you think I have a little? Well, maybe when you're a little older, but no, no, no. The way you talk to me. I wouldn't let a strange man talk to me that way. I should hope not. What would you do if he did? I'd knock his block off. Oh, that's what I hoped you'd do. David, now, come on. Now, let's be serious. Well, Back to I, work. I, I thought we decided to go to Cuba. Did we? Mm -hmm. Well, now, let's not rush into deciding. Um, what's the matter with China? Do you really want to go to China? Mm, no, I guess I don't want to go to China. That's what I thought. Mm. China's on the bottom side of the earth. It seems a little far away. Mm -hmm. But I will have dinner with you in Chinatown. Oh, good, good. Mm. Now, come on, be serious. What other travel folders? Logical ones. Now, Logical no more ones. silly. Well, here's Miami. No, I want to go out of the country someplace. Then uh, California. Nope. It's out of the country, but it's too far away. Oh, I see. How about Mexico? Where men are men. Caramba. This is dope. Mm -hmm. Men are men in Eastbrook, Connecticut. Caramba. Don't let any Mexican ever talk you out of that, either. No, a recommendation. What about Mexico, now? I wouldn't feel safe in Mexico. Why not? Well, don't they have bullfighting all over Mexico? Oh, I'll protect you. Mm -mm. I'll fight the bulls with my red cape. You can't even kill a fly. Don't try to tell me you can kill bulls. Now, that's my wife for you, always pulling me down. <laughs> now, listen, Chiquita. Mexico is a fine place to go. Mm. Sunshine, some barreros, the music of guitars. Stop drooling. Neat your window at night, white teeth, dark eyes. Uh -huh. David, darling, we have lots more folders around. Where, where are they for? Well, now, let's see. Uh, here's another one. Oh, here's a good one. Here's a good one. Mm. The Belgian Congo. Belgian Congo? Mm hmm Where on earth is the Belgian Congo? Are you serious? Of course I'm serious. I'm always serious about remembering where someplace is. Well, I can't believe, I simply can't believe that you don't know where the Belgian Congo is. Well, now, how many people go to the Belgian Congo, for heaven's sake? Thousands of people, thousands. People from there never come over here and, and, and tell me where they were. So how would I be supposed to know where they'd been, for heaven's sake? Well, I can't get over it. My own wife. My own dear wife. Didn't you ever study geography? Yeah, I study geography, but I don't know where the Belgian Congo is. No, you should. It just so happens that it's in Africa. Oh. Africa. Well, that's why I don't know where it is. What is why you don't know where it is? Africa. That was the fourth grade. I was sick a lot in the fourth grade. Oh, I see. I, as a matter of fact, I must have missed Africa completely. Well, Africa missed you, too. Besides, if it's Belgian, darling, what is it doing in Africa? Now, that's a very interesting political question. It I'll is. Oh, please don't answer, please. Mm. I don't have time for an answer to interesting political questions. You know, I don't think that you have any intellectual curiosity well, at all. Well, I have whatsoever. plenty of curiosity, so that makes up for it. Oh, golly, there's some fascinating names in the Belgian Congo. Look at here. See this one? Here's a place called Kanda Kanda. Kanda Kanda. What are you supposed to make in Kanda Kanda? Boy, I don't, and look, mm -hmm. there's another one called... Casango. Casango. Oh, God, oh, that looks good. Here's one called Popkabaka. Popkabaka. Oh, that's a great one. Oh, there are millions of names like that. 
Bangadinga. Oh, Bangadinga. 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 <laughs> what do you think it would be like to live in a place called Bangadinga? Oh, no, I can't you just imagine what it would be like? I don't How'd know. you like to meet somebody from another another village and you walk up to him and you say, Hello, my friend from Bangadinga. Hello. Remember me? I'm from Pop Kabaka. How do you do? How do you do? <laughs> Oh, darling, aren't you glad you're from Eastbrook, Connecticut? How complicated to be to come from a place with such a long name. Ah, the Congo, the lure of the jungle, mumbo jumbo. <laughs> if we went to the Congo, I'd kill you a tiger or bring you home an alligator. Mm, well, I'd rather you brought me home an alley cotter. Mm. Ooh. <laughs> no, David, I absolutely turned thumbs down to the Belgian Congo. What else have you got there? Guatemala. Well, Guatemala with you. Oh, Claudia. <laughs> well, how about uh, Hawaii? I'm fine. How are you? Honestly, I don't think you appreciate traveling oh, at all. Oh, I do. I do like appreciate that. traveling. I adore traveling. First, you buy a plane ticket at a fabulous price. Mm-hmm. You fly halfway across the world. Live out of a suitcase. Move before your shirts come back from the laundry. Never have your dresses pressed. Eat food in hotels all the time. Too much garlic, not enough garlic. Warm climate, cold climate, strange people, strange languages, being a stranger every place. Oh, yes, I think traveling's lovely. Yeah, you make it sound just great. Then after a long trip, you come home. Drive into your own driveway, you put your car in your own garage, have a latch key that fits into your own door, see the baby again, sit down on your lap in front of a crackling fire. <sighs> seems a little silly and extravagant to go on a trip just to come back home, doesn't it? You really don't want to. We can, you know. Seriously. David, I I thought I did at first, but I really don't want to. I guess I'm tired of traveling. It's been a pretty inexpensive trip. Well, it's the only trip I want. Of all the world, I want to live here. Here I am. Hey, I nearly forgot something. What, darling? Lean over, Mrs. Norton. There's a welcome home kiss waiting for you after your long, long trip. Some things can add a lot to the joy of daily living. Coke at the movies, for example, is one such thing. It's nice to have Coca-Cola ice cold right in the lobby of a theater so that you can enjoy the pause that refreshes before or after the show. It's one of those extras that provides a gala touch. Well, Joe, don't you welcome me home? After your long and arduous journey? Mm, quite a trip in our fireside chair, wasn't it? Now there comes a winter night we all dream of foreign countries and beaches and music and sunshine. You know, I thought Claudia really wanted to go. I was all ready to pack my bag. Well, one really never knows with Claudia, does one? <laughs> one certainly doesn't. Well, she'll take a little trip tomorrow. Oh? Where to? Just to the city for lunch with you and Roger and Mama. Oh, the, uh... Four of us for lunch, hmm? You aren't very enthusiastic. Have you ever had lunch with Claudia and Mama in a restaurant? No, I can't say I have. Well, then you better be around tomorrow, Joe, when eavesdrop. Because those two little girls with a menu, well... Well, I'll see you tomorrow. All right, David. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now, this is Joe King saying au revoir... And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. These broadcasts are adapted for radio by Manya Starr. The entire production is supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola.